Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, Teacher Professional Development. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin, and this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge. And today I want to talk about the ways you can use your iPad for professional development. And the first thing that I want to talk about is something that it took me quite a while to get to, but that was using Twitter to develop a personal learning network or a plan uh, to actually do my own professional development. And so I use Twitter, and right now I use the Twitter app, but I've recommended before, and I still do, for, especially for people who are starting out on Twitter, to actually use Flipboard as a springboard into your uh, Twitter learning. So I use Flipboard because it opens up all of my tweets, uh, on all the tweets I receive from the different people I follow, and you can see that this is my Twitter feed, and this is what you can see uh, when you get uh, there. These are the different things that different people have shared with me, uh, some of it in real time, some of it uh, is from a few days ago, and as you find things that people that you follow retweet, you can also find new people to follow and learn from. And one of the things that I've learned is don't hesitate to follow new people and don't hesitate to ignore people or even to unfollow people who are filling up your feeds with things you don't care about. So this is how you create a personal learning network. You follow people and what I like about Flipboard is instead of just bringing the 140 characters, it actually brings in the pictures and uh, the articles of the websites that are behind those tweets and you can see that it makes a very rich uh, array of comments and ideas that you can start reading. What do you do with it once you get it? Let's say you read something and you want to remember it, you want to share it with somebody else or you want to make sure that you can read it later. Uh, Flipboard gives you a few options and one of the options is to uh, add it into a magazine you created. So for example you can create a magazine, in my case I created an ed magazine, where I add things that I'm interested in that are about education. So this was about education and I can add it right there and now it's going to be in that magazine. Another way you can do that is you can post it back on Twitter and then find it in your feed or conversely if you get into it you can see that you have a lot more options, you can comment on it, but one of the ways that you can do this is now you have a lot more options. You can read it later, which means it saves it and keeps it on your iPad, so even if you're not connected, you'll be able to get to it. You can save it just as a picture. You can copy the link and send it somewhere, open it in your uh, browser, in this case in Safari, and then save it there. Or you can use Facebook, Tumblr, Google Plus. Another important way is using your email and why using your email? Because when you use your email you can actually add it to a different app that concentrates all the articles you're interested in and I'll talk in a second about a few of those but one of them is Instapaper. So if I send it to my Instapaper, see Instapaper read later, it'll show up in a different app that will keep all of the stories that I'm interested in and build them over time so I can go back to them. So you, as you can see, you can follow Twitter. Now, you can use Twitter, but you can also follow specific uh, magazines or specific uh, web outlets. So you can see I'm following, for example, Wired magazine, not connected to education, but I'm following Edutopia and Mindshift that both have a lot to say about innovation in education so you can see, for example, oh, if I go into Mindshift, these are the stories that uh, right now are on top of the list and you can go down. So it really creates a magazine for professional development. The one thing you have to learn is there's a lot of information out there. You have to be selective and you have to be smart about what you follow and what you pay attention to. There is no way to pay attention to everything that's going on. So selectiveness is really where it's at. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you what Instapaper does. So if you locate 
my Instapaper uh, app. What you can see is this is where all of the things that I send will accumulate and stories will accumulate from bottom to top so newer things will come up on top and older things will come up on bottom. You can highlight, you can browse, you can search, you can create even folders. So as the list of articles, websites and ideas and even uh, movies and pictures uh, becomes bigger, you can start sorting those across multiple uh, domains and create meaningful folders and archives and you can even like specific things and then share them with others. We all have a file of things to read later. We all don't always get to them. In my case, it's often because simply I don't remember where they are. Now with Instapaper and with uh, Flipboard, I know where they are and I can go back to them if I'm interested and I can search them, which is just as important. Another option which does basically the same thing is called Pocket and it's another place to highlight things what I like about Pocket vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Instapaper. It seems to be doing a better job in presenting pictures and providing the graphic interface as well as the words. So this is something that you can use, use it exactly the same way. It becomes a, a place where you send an email basically saying Pocket from any website or any a flipboard entry, something like that. You just write share, go to email, type in pocket and then send it and it'll add itself to that page so you can read it. Another thing, another app that does something a little bit different is Symbaloo EDU and Symbaloo is an app that allows you to save websites and links to different boards and what you do is you create your own boards with your links, with your anything that you want to follow that is on a website can be accumulated here and what it gives you is a quick access to all of the resources you want. You can create it this for your students or you can do this for your own professional development to see what's being updated on various websites on, on various places that you're interested in and I've created one for iPads, I just started creating it and by the way this goes across platforms which is great, it means whatever devices you have you can use and you can see that I've created a few tiles here so a tile will immediately connect it, this is in, in this case links us to the Tech Edge uh, website uh, on UNL and if you want to add new tiles all you have to do is click on add a tile or search for a tile so for example uh, we can go to uh, read write think one of my favorite websites with great apps dot org and if the link works it'll now show up here. So here's the new one and you can change the color, you can change the picture of the tile and all of that, but it takes you exactly uh, right into a website that helps you do professional development. So this is a way to accumulate links for yourself or for your students and not have to search for them time and time again. And again, this works across platforms, so this is very useful for uh, professional learning and professional development. So today we talked about a few apps that help you really link up with other people, follow either people, organizations, websites that really allow you to learn, innovate and see what others are doing and what is being and what is effective. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.